In the next few videos I'm going to build a game using my custom physics engine, and with the help of the socket.io library I will turn it into a multiplayer game, and then deploy it so that everybody can play with it. As for the first step, in this first episode I will get familiar with the socket.io library. Before setting up a local server, I'm going to start with an overview of the project's structure. These here are the clients, each of which will be connected to the server through the browser. And this here is the server, a remote machine where the backend code is running, implemented by the JavaScript runtime environment called Node.js. The clients and the server are sending and receiving messages to and from each other through communication channels. That is the part I will use the socket.io library for. And once I manage to make all these work together, the next step would be including a database so that I will be able to store user profiles and various statistics on the server. To get started, I will need to get Node.js. I can download it from the nodejs.org. I will need the 64-bit Windows version. And once it's downloaded, I can simply install it. Then I've created an empty folder and opened it in VS Code. The first thing I will do here is opening a terminal. And if I type node-v here, then if nothing went wrong, I will get a number like this, which shows that the Node.js has been successfully installed and its version is what I see here. I can also type npm-v and I should get a similar result. npm stands for Node Package Manager. It comes with Node.js. This will make installing Node modules very simple. And finally, if I simply type Node here, then a virtual environment called REPL opens. That stands for Read Evil Print Loop. And it's useful to test simple JavaScript code. Like if I type console.log hello, then press enter, then the hello will be displayed in the terminal. And to quit from this shell, I can press Ctrl and C. Now the first step towards setting up a local server is creating a blank JavaScript file, which I will call server.js. So for demonstration purposes, I type here console.log hello as well. And if I go back to the terminal and type node server, where server refers to the file name, then the code in the server.js file will be executed. And I will see the hello being displayed on the terminal. And now it's time to create a new node project. I go and type npm init in the terminal. Then I get some questions I can pretty much ignore. Although I want to make sure that the entry point will be the server.js file. This npm init initializes the node package manager for a new project. I can see that once it's done, a file called package.json has been created in the folder. And I can open it with the VS code. This file is supposed to contain the module dependencies, but since I don't have any modules yet, there are no dependencies. So let's start to install the modules I will need. The first one will be the Express. It's a Node.js web application framework, commonly used for developing Node.js applications. I can install a new module by typing npm install dash dash save and then module name, which is now Express. The dash dash save will add express to the dependencies in the package.json file. And I can see once the installation is finished that the express had been added to the dependencies there. To get an idea what to do with this express in order to start the local server, I can go to the express.js website, which is expressjs.com, and it has a hello world example. First, I include the express module to Node.js by using the require function. Then I assign an app variable to the express function and set the value of the port to 3000. I will basically just copy these lines and here it says that this app starts a server and listens on port 3000 for connections. The app responds with hello world for requests to the root URL. If I paste this in the server.js and run the code by typing node server in the console, then I can see the message example app is listening at port 3000 and this is how i start a local server using express
Now to start some communication between client and server, I will use the socket.io library and I will install it the same way I did the express by typing npm init dash dash save and then socket.io. According to their official web page, socket.io enables real-time, bidirectional and event-based communication. It works on every platform, browser or device, focusing equally on reliability and speed. Anyway, it's installed and to have access to its functionalities, I include it with the required function as well, same as for the express. Before starting a client-server communication, I would definitely need a client, not just a server. So I create a new JavaScript file, client.js, and since it will run in the browser, I better create an index.html file as well. Here I can type exclamation mark and press tab to get a boilerplate HTML code. And then at the end of the body, I will need a reference to the client.js, like that. And to be able to use socket.io on the client side as well, I need a reference to the socket.io, for which I will use the socket.io CDN, or Content Delivery Network. I copy the link and I will put the reference above the other reference. To initialize a connection between the client and the server, I use the IO function and as for arguments I provide a URL which is localhost with a port number which is 3000. By the way the socket.io website has a really helpful documentation which is worth to get familiar with. I can go to the getting started part and in the integrating socket.io chapter it says that socket.io is composed of two parts a server that integrates with the Node.js HTTP server and the client library that loads on the server side. So first let me just copy this io.on function to my server.js and see what it does. Before testing it, I grab this app.listen function and I'm going to use it as the value of a variable called server. And I will use that server value for the require socket.io. I restart the server, then start the client with the open live server option and then once the browser opens the code in the client.js file executes and if i go back to the terminal i can see that a user connected to understand this code i just copied a little better here are some basic infos about transferring data between clients and the server there are basically two main functions in socket.io emit which is used to send data and on to receive it both of these functions have an event name as their first argument that can be anything except for a few reserved ones, for example the connection that I just used. And the second argument is optional. It can be a data I want to send to the other end of the connection, usually as an object. If the client or the server receives a data after an event it was listening to is fired, it can take that data in a callback function. The client is only connected to the server, so it always emits the data to the server, but the server is connected with every client, and so it has several options for emitting. Three quite common ones are socket.emit, which sends the data only to the sender client, the socket.broadcast.emit, that sends data to all the clients, except for the sender to which the socket belongs to, and io.on sends data to every single client. First, let's make the server say hello only to the client that just connected and no one else. I need to use the socket.emit on the server side. I call the event server to client and the data I emit is a string saying hello client. And the client will be listening to this event and once it's fired, which will happen right after the client is connected to the server, it will run a callback function which will alert the data received from the server. I'm using an RO function here, and by the way, I can call that variable anything, it doesn't have to be data. To test it, I go and restart the server in the terminal, and then I refresh the browser, and after a few seconds, first I can see the user connected message in the terminal, and a little bit later, the message from the server appears in the browser. And if I want the data transfer in the opposite direction, then I use the socket.emit function on the client side. The event's name will be client to server. The message will be hello server. 
and the server will be listening to that event after the connection has been established. So again, I restart the server, refresh the browser, and now once the server notices that the client is connected, it displays a message on the terminal, sends hello to the client, and the client alerts it in the browser, and the client sends hello to the server too, which will be displayed in the terminal. So these were the messages sent from server to client and from client to server. Now, what if I want to send data from one client to another? Since the clients are not directly connected to each other, that will happen through the server. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to go to the index.html file and create a button element there with the ID of hello button. And what I want is that whenever I press this button on the client side, all the other connected clients will receive a hello message. In the client.js, I grab the button by the ID and create an event listener saying that whenever the button is clicked, the client emits a message to the server with the event called client to client. The server will listen to this event and once it's been fired, it will immediately broadcast it to every connected client except for the one the message arrived from. So I use socket.broadcast.emit and use server to client for event name again. I've used that once already, but since the client will handle this the same way, namely alerting it in the browser, I can use the event name once again. Now if I open several windows and I wait until all the clients are connected, which usually takes a little while, then if I press the button on one of the clients, then the hello will be alerted on the other clients. And these three kind of data transfers that I just implemented is what the game I'm going to build will be based on. Just instead of alerting messages, I will use the physics engine I built last time to be able to interact with other players in a probably more enjoyable way.